Welcome FPL Surgery listeners and watchers. My name's Rich and this is episode 221 of the FPL Surgery podcast and YouTube. And as always, I'm here with Dave. How are you, Dave? Good weekend? It was a great weekend. Now, obviously, uh, I'm not allowed to call you Rich today. So you're going to be referred to as Richard from now on. So yes, Richard, it was a very lovely weekend. I had a great weekend. Good to have the football back. It sounds so patronising when you when you call me <laughs> Richard. Like it sounds like I'm being like told off. It's supposed to, yeah, yeah. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> God, um, do you want to get on with the get on with the the yeah. headlines? Yeah. Do you want to explain what headlines we've got today on this glorious game week two preview? Yeah, of course, Richard. No worries. So are the headlines for today: potential Gundogan replacements, which premiums do we want or need, and finally, Rich's metric team. But who is Rich? You might ask. Well, Richard, what kind of guest well, have we got today? This is very, this is very confusing. Um, so <laughs> this week's guest, as you may have already guessed, his name is Rich, Rich FPL. He is known for writing for the Hub. He's had a two K finish as well, and obviously has an incredible first name. So welcome, Rich. How's it going? Yeah, very well, thank you. Thanks for having me on, boys. It's an absolute pleasure. Um, one of the first pods I started listening to when I got into FPL and FPL Twitter back when uh, Iceman and Stefan were in charge and got around to being on and on with you boys so yeah not, yeah. not bad at all not bad at all Our yeah we're, we're glad to have you on <laughs> glad to have you on i mean i'm i couldn't make you be richard though um even though i wanted to yeah i'd i feel i feel under pressure from the from the get-go so i'm glad that I'm glad that you've you've drawn the short straw on that one <laughs> thank you everyone um, we've who got... is i was I'm, sorry you were gonna start plugging stuff i was i was just gonna say you thanks were, for but watching. i've got I've got a question from Heisenberg. Oh, um, yeah, okay, go for it. Yeah, he's basically said to ask Rich if he's got the grass stains out of his trousers. <laughs> no, I haven't. Uh, yeah, me and me and Heisenberg, Wes, I've got to know him the last sort of year or so since I've been with Hub, and he's a he's a cracking lad, and we're both massive fans of The Office. So um, when you when you sent the question to me out yesterday and I saw that, I knew that I was in for, in for some stick. But yeah, all good. So this wasn't something that happened at like a Hub meal or anything like that? Uh, no, I brought a spare pair of trousers for that, and Wes left pretty sharpish for the one in July. So um, I'll I'll leave that to you guys. I love the idea of someone bringing extra trousers to, <laughs> like just the just the, oh no these these are just my extra trousers. Everyone just being like well, we can't say anything, but we <laughs> we really well want to ask why. Um, thank you everyone who's joined us on the live stream. Uh, it's awesome to have you here. If you haven't already, it'd be awesome if you subscribe. We're aiming for uh, a million, so. We're nearly there. We just need a couple more. So that'd be great if you could subscribe if you haven't already. All right, Rich. Yeah, headline I wonder if one? we can hit that goal by game week two. We'll that'd see. By the game week two deadline. That'd be class. <laughs> yeah. So we just wanted to start. I mean, obviously, it was an amazing game week. So we just wanted to start with some stats um, from Fantasy Football Hub. Of course, if you want to sign up to Fantasy Football Hub, the link is in the description, whether you're watching on YouTube or listening to the podcast as well. We've just basically brought up some stats. I've seen Alan's in the chat as well. Um, so obviously we haven't got Alan this year because it's just more difficult to do, um, you know, doing doing videos as well. But thanks for your work last year, Alan. And we've got basically this table. Antonio's top with a 1.51 XG. However, I mean, part of that could be penalties as well because that obviously includes the 0 0.76, which is funnily enough, that's what Danny Ings got with just one shot on target. And Bruno, for his hat trick, got 1.06 xG from his three. He had four shots, three on target, three goals. That's nuts, isn't it? Absolutely nuts. What a what a guy. So Bruno, I feel. Do you remember we were making the video? Um, so the intro for the surgery, and we deliberately chose Bruno scoring a penalty, and now yeah. he decides to score three goals from open play just to <laughs> <laughs> make us look like idiots. Yeah. Well, I, I don't look like an idiot because it wasn't me who plugged that penalty in that intro, I'm sure. <laughs> I wanted to do the, <laughs> you remember the Cavani thing where he didn't touch it? That's what I wanted, definitely. Um, but yeah, the, the, the headline one that we're going to go for after these is uh, potential Gundogan replacements. And I wonder why this is a headline. Do you own, uh, Rich, not Richard, do you own Gundogan? <clears throat> no, he's not for me. No. I um at that price point, I went Greenwood, and um, yeah, Great I'm pick. glad Great after pick. seeing him on um, the floor writhing around. <laughs> and I didn't pick him, and Iceman certainly didn't pick him. Richard, do you have a Gundogan? <laughs> 
I have Gundawan, but that's <laughs> oh, not that's why. Oh, that's headline. Okay, no fair play. All right. I mean, there's Sorry. not much because it's been such an amazing <laughs> game week for a, for a lot of people. It's uh-huh. it, there's not actually that much to discuss. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, we're going to get into our teams first of all, and then we then we move on to the headlines. So we're going to obviously we're going to start with you, Rich. It, how was your game week, and you know what were the decisions that you had going into that game week? So um, yeah, so as you mentioned a bit earlier, I write for Fantasy Football Hub with a. Um, uh, a team that I use a, a metric for, sort of just fun, fantasy or FPL points as a metric. Um, so that's a separate team um, that my wife runs because we're only allowed one team each. Um, and that one was, a lot of that was just debating, looking at the fixtures, looking at the FPL ticker that I that I build for each position. Um, and the only, basically, Saar was a, a one that I wasn't too sure about, but he had great fixtures, part of a front three and a good price. So I went with him. Um, similar with uh, Jared Bowen, um, and they're the only two different uh, players that I've got from my actual team. But that team scored 108 points, um, and I think we're I think you know ranks kind of relevant right now. But it's about 79k, so great start. Mm-hmm. Um, my normal team is 102 points, which um, is at 253k, which is where I ended the last season annoyingly. So I've not moved since uh, the end of May. But um, yeah, with that one, uh, it's a lot of fixtures. Um, I like to look at fixtures to start with, um, like a block of six um, and the attack and the defence fixture tickers on hub. That gives me a rough idea of who has good fixtures. Um, so I've got Sanchez and Veltman. Um, obviously didn't come up trumps this week, but they've still got great fixtures and, and good underlying stats. Mm. Um, Trent Trent didn't go to the Euro, so he's fully rested and he's just such a good asset. And like 7.5, I still think he's going to, make a mockery of that uh, I went with Simicas in the end because um, I know there's a lot of debate about Simicas or Jota but I went with him just because a four million pound start in Liverpool left back um, it seemed like a gift so I just had to take it and he looked really good against Norwich so I'm pleased with that um, Shaw um, he's underpriced and he's got good attacking numbers um, Greenwood like I mentioned a second ago um, with Rashford out I just kind of figured he would be a bit more nailed at least until Rashford is back yeah. Um, Salah and Bruno, just yeah, no, don't need to say anything about them. Um, Tony, he did he blanked, but he's got a great record in the championship, and he's a very confident player. And then yeah, Ings and Antonio, um, just good finishers and good fixtures. It's a monster score, and I, I mean, normally you'd you'd expect to have a much higher rank. I mean, it's a very very good rank. Um, but I mean, if someone told you you were going to get 102 points without any chips, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a mad one, isn't it? And I had a good start to the season last season, so I just tried to think about what I did for prep last season. And after that, it kind of went to pot in about game week three onwards when I played my wild card. So hopefully this year can can maintain it a bit better. Yeah, nice, nice. I mean, were there any... So when you look back at that that team you put together, and I believe it's on the screen now, and obviously you've, you've gone through the players um, for the audio listeners, is there anything you regret doing or regret not doing? So my big... The big, the big um, debate, debate in my head was Barnes or Rafinha, and um, I ended up going with Barnes just because I, I kind of thought I think of the first four, Barnes has got better potential to outscore him. I think Rafinha is the better player over the season, mm. but um, I've gone for Barnes as just a, like a short term upside pick, mm. um, and I've got plenty of um, space to move down to Rafinha from Barnes if I want to. Um, in the in the metric team, there was a, there was so much uh, talk about Ben Rama, wasn't there? Um, and I stuck to, I stuck to yeah. my guns. And I was like, <laughs> you <you're> smiling. <laughs> um, I stuck to my guns with um, with Bowen over Ben Rama, and Bowen looked good yesterday as well. But obviously, Ben Rama was the one that came away with the double figure haul. He like skint four players in the box and then hit it right at the keeper. And I, it. who hadn't picked him, who had been talking about him preseason, was raging when he got through all those players. And I was like, I can't believe he's about to score. I'm going to get such a telling off Richard <laughs> for it. <laughs> and, uh, and then he missed. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> like, I, I, I've never thought I would, I would celebrate Bowen missing something. But there you go. That's what FPL does to you. does. But I mean, it's, it's hard to get things perfect in the, you know, in the first game week. So I think you pretty much got it close, close to perfect. Yeah, like looking at your team ongoing Please and stuff. That. It looks great. Please, yeah, but um, so if we if we move on to my team, um, I think the only real decision I had was which midfielders I had to support Salah, Fernandez, and Ben Rama. So I I got a hundred points, and I mean after last season I'm delighted. You know I didn't even get to this rank of 377k the entirety of last season. So you know I'm over the moon. 
I did go for Mares in Gundawan. Maybe it's a mistake. I mean, obviously we've got the headline <laughs> headline about Gundawan, but you know there was a couple of annoying things there, wasn't there? Because De Bruyne unexpectedly returned, and maybe yeah. I trusted Pep too much. And then uh, Gundawan got injured, which again we can't really account for. Mm. Mares is now off the back of two pretty poor performances, you know, after the Community Shield and then yesterday. Did you watch the game? Okay. Yeah, I watched the game. game. I, watched I didn't the game. think he did that poorly. People keep saying that, but I don't know. I think I expected more. I mean, there were quite exciting the whole... moments, weren't there? Because I remember you WhatsApp me when Mares and Gundogan were boasted over a couple of free kicks. And I was yeah. like, yeah, here we go. Yeah. You got both your players. <laughs> no, but I, I keep seeing that. Sorry to derail your team thing, but everyone That's keeps... Right. Every comes, like, Mares didn't play very well. Well, that's two. Now, to be fair, like we don't expect many City players to play more than two games in a row to start them, and that's fine. And I don't, I don't mind that. And as a Mares owner, I'm not. I'm. I'm probably might be biased, but like he had a shot that should have maybe went in. He had a he lot. Scored, he yeah. skinned a lot of people on the right hand side. He was doing really, really well. He was actually better than Sterling, which is probably why Sterling came off before him. Um, the the thing was that that none of the city players did that well. Like as a team, it wasn't great. It's not. I, I feel like we're kind of lumping it on Mares because most of us own him, or or he's the highest owned uh, city player. But yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't uh, think any of them I did think that what, well. <laughs> what makes it a bit twitchy is like, in fact you said. I mean, obviously they they didn't score and they didn't score in the Community Shield either. But obviously there was a lot of youth players playing. But then also this return of Kevin De Bruyne that adds that extra level to it doesn't it because yeah. i mean if he's going to get in the team and it sounds like he's not ready to play 90 minutes but then can you trust pep when pep said he wasn't fit and then he came off the bench yeah so i think there's just that bit of nervous nervousness about it i mean i, I don't regret it i think my reasoning behind going maras and gundawan you know i can live with that you know i took a risk maybe i should have gone for someone like greenwood but that's only in only in hindsight so I, i'm i'm honestly i'm over the moon i got 100 points i wasn't he's stubborn on bruno team. Which has been a you know a big yeah. thing for me. So yeah, I feel like I feel like I've achieved something just by getting over that stumbling block. That <laughs> many people realised months and maybe even years ago um, that you keep Bruno in your team. So yeah, delighted with that. I mean, Dave, you didn't quite make the hundred club, but you <laughs> certainly had a good week. <laughs> yeah, I did okay. I did all right. Um, the main reasons why I didn't get into the hundred club was because everyone had Antonio, and I made a last ditch decision to get Maras instead. So I had to downgrade either Tony or. Uh, Antonio and I decided to go with with Antonio because it meant that I could still have Barnes because um, I really wanted Barnes after watching him play. Um, so yeah, so Barnes and Mares had to make way for Antonio. Unfortunately, it was either him or Ings, I guess, or I could have brought it down Ings, but I didn't really want to. Ings is great, and I didn't know Antonio was on penalties. That was interesting. Like I thought he might be. Well, but, he's, I don't think he is he anymore. Say but, be anymore. Yeah, no, which, which is great. Um, who was it? Andy t tweeted, like, because I don't know, for whatever reason, where Andy stays in, in Ireland, let's talk. He just knows what's ha going to happen before it does. I don't know if you ever follow him, like, while you're playing a game or watching a game. He's quick. But he yeah. tweeted saying something like, um, Antonio's on penalties. And then before the penalty went in in my stream, um, or oh, it didn't go in, Suchek scored it, um... Andy had already tweeted saying Antonio's no longer on penalties. <laughs> and I was like, what? What's happened? Did he miss? What's going on? Um, kind of ruined it for you. So, yeah. But um, I was ex I it was good for me as a non-owner that he missed it. So that was kind of okay. Um, but yeah, I had all the other players everyone else has to Liverpool. I had Sanchez. Shaw didn't do much for me. I had made a, a very last ditch decision as well. I know we were talking about Sue Fowl for a long time. And he was in my team as a fourth defender for a while in preseason, and I eventually decided to get to to move him on because I I, I had to look over the stats and everything, and I wasn't a hundred percent on West Ham defense after all. And even though Sufal looked really good, um, I decided to just go safe and go shot. And then I'm I'm pretty glad I did because they didn't look very good um, in defense at all. Really, um, they were a bit shaky. Newcastle looked a lot better than a lot of people thought they were going to. So yeah, I'm yeah. happy to have that yeah. one point with Shaw, like everyone else. I think I think your team's team's solid. There's no there's no major issues. I think that applies to all of us. I mean, oh, I've got the only issue with with Gundogan. <laughs> Shall I'm we move sure, on? Sure. Then? <laughs> yeah, I think I think we should. I mean, I, I did want to talk about Tony actually, because okay. we obviously before the, the the deadline we did the little like lunchtime deadline stream, didn't we? And mm -hmm. you know, we said because of crowds, we thought you know Brentford would score, and it was really frustrating that Tony didn't have a you know didn't have a shot on target. But I just think we've just got to leave it and and wait. I think I'm not annoyed at him. I don't think that was a mistake because he's a lot less money than Ings and Ings 
didn't have a shot until the 97th minute. Yeah. So yeah. What do you think? He's got Palace away next. He's got Palace away next, isn't he? So uh, Mm. you know, I mean, for most people, they're probably looking to roll a transfer unless you've got a Gundo shape problem or whatever. But um, I I was really impressed by Tony. Um, I thought even though he didn't didn't get amongst amongst it on that end, he was dropping deep and creating stuff and being a nuisance. He's got so much awareness about him as well. I think I think he'll come good. Just got to be patient with him. Yeah, I agree, and especially the point you make about the about the fixture. Um, I don't think many people are going to be look, look, looking to sell, and we've got a couple of options we can move on to. But let's get into the first headline. So it's the headline I've been accused of making about my own team. <laughs> it's potential Gundogan replacements. This can be this can apply. Basically, it's about mid-priced midfielders. Let's let's call it that. Yeah. Um, and we did have a question from FPL Najib saying, what should we do about Gundogan? Any good replacement? So it's obviously a very big talking topic um, in the community as well. Um, so, I mean, Rich, are there any that stand out to you? I know you don't have Gundogan, but if you did, are there any players that, that stand out in particular? Yeah, I mean, I I, I would probably look at someone like Saar. Um, did, so, did really well for Watford. I mean, Villa were, Villa were terrible, but Saar's Sar's been on the radar of a lot of people for a couple of years now, and he's he's almost looks like he's starting to get to like a, a decent Premier League standard now. So Sar maybe um, Ben Rama, of course. Yeah, it's difficult. It's going to be difficult to ignore him um, if he keeps if he keeps turning up like that, and if he's playing in that Lingard role, which Jesse did so well last year, um, and then you know it, it, he might be a bit of a no brainer. Um, other names I thought about is that and Burma for Brentford as well because he was he was Tony's partner up front and he looked more like he looked really lively and more he likely did. to score. Um, but I've also wrote down and it's a bit of a it's a bit of a left field one. It's if you can afford to wait, um, someone like Adama Traore, because and hear mm. me out, <laughs> um, terrible finishing, but he had like six shots, four in the box. Um, I had a look at like his average position and things and. He was playing almost as far forward as Jimenez, and there was a particular a particular incident where he was just put through by Moutinho, and you'd expect him to finish that nine times out of ten. So he's got tricky fixtures for the next couple, but then Wolves are like top of the hub fixture ticker um, from like game week four or something, or maybe even game week three. But he might be a, a left field option if you're looking for somebody differential early doors. Yeah, I like, I like that. Like you say, he is he is a bad finisher, but yeah, there, there's so many names, and I think if I had to pick one, you've mentioned Ben Rama already, but obviously he's already in, in my team. But I think he'd be my priority, despite these rumours about Lingard. His price is gonna, I want to say rocket, but you know he's gonna go up in price, you know, a couple yeah. of times. And I think it's always nice to get on this budget one early, uh, budget players early, especially when we've got so many, pre- you know, premiums have performed this week. So on Neither. the screen just now is uh, Triore's heat map. I just wanted to have a wee look while you're saying that there, and he is in the box a lot more than he was last season. Not bad. Yeah, he yeah. can do well, but it's like you say. Like, there's a lot of there's a lot of obvious options, aren't there? Like Sar and Ben Rama. So you probably go to somebody like that first. But yeah. interesting know. though, good pick. The most annoying one, because I think Rafinha would be the most ob- obvious one. But obviously, since we recorded last week, there's all this confusion, isn't there, where Brazil have got obviously the international breaks between game week three and game week four. So if he goes with the Brazil squad, there's all this talk over the quarantine rules, etc., which means he oh, missed yeah. game week four. But then that's that was against Liverpool anyway. Yeah, and the next, the next two are nice. Yeah. Yeah. He's, I mean, he's, he's going to be a... He's one of those that... If you've got Rafinha, really, you can just have him. and You don't need to chop and change him out because he'll tick over nicely. So, I mean, he's a great option as well. Yeah, and a lot of people in the chat are saying the same thing. Ben Rama, Sar, there's a Pogba there, um, which I'm sure we'll talk about in a bit. Um, tips is, Pogba's tips gone is up in priority. price now, though. Is that a problem for you? Well, I mean, if people have Gundogan and no money in the bank, they're obviously yeah. Pogba and Gundogan with 7.5. So, the ah, okay. problem you would be them. you literally couldn't afford him. Unless you did, get, unless did you, you do get, a sneaky transfer really on Saturday, minute, though? But, did you get one? Did you do it? Say, say again? Did you do a cheeky transfer on Saturday night for Pogba? For Pogba? Yeah. No, do you know what? I thought about it and then I was like, no, it I'm would not be... doing it. Do you know, because last season I got William got three assists. And I, <laughs> I was going to mention that too. I forgot about yeah. that. 
crazy. So I, got, I got him in, so I'm not I'm not falling for that again. And <laughs> I think we haven't, we haven't even mentioned Greenwood, have we? Um, no, that's another one. Arafa well. Lamb said, is Greenwood a valid option throughout the season or at least for the next four to six game weeks with Cavani and Sancho being available? Would be a, would he be a valid FPL option? Basically, he's saying Greenwood. Would, yeah. would he be of interest to either of you? Well, I've not got him yet. So, yeah. but it's always a yet, isn't it? Like I, I, there's a lot going on in my team right now and I don't know if I'll be able to, to justify trying to do much to bring Greenwood in. However, like he's always been a ticking time bomb because of his, you know, the team and the fact that they bought, you know, a massive minutes, player yeah. and they've got Rashford coming back and blah, 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 blah. It was cool to see him play up front though. That was interesting. Like yeah, I think Rashford's out to like October apparently, so you might get a few weeks out of him. Um, and I mean, I started with him on that assumption that I think he'll be he'll at least get four or five game weeks, and yeah. then I'll deal with that as on a wild card or something. Yeah, exactly, and and it means when you because you've done that, it means it's only going to cost you one transfer, right? Whereas people who didn't start with him, that's two transfers, and that's a lot. I mean, yeah. he is good though. Like it, if I had another point five, I would definitely have had him over Barnes. It was just something that I couldn't afford. Um, but uh, yeah, no, great player. If you've got some someone who is seven point five, like Gundo, he's an, he's an interesting one because I feel like obviously with if you're replacing Gundogan, for example, you can replace him with Greenwood, but then it feels like you're replacing a player you didn't want to replace yet with mm-hmm. a player who's got who could have a limited shelf life. Yeah, so it's, it's almost like, like you're Jota. bringing in uh, you're bringing in a player. I'd love to have him next week, but then you're almost looking at a way to get out of it. Yeah, and. Also, if you go to someone like Rafinha, or I like them in Brentford shout as well, um, despite probably not wanting to double up on Brentford attackers, you're freeing up a bit of money, and that money can then be used. And obviously, this will go into our later headline about you know that money can go towards someone like Son, particularly yeah. in a in a case like mine where I could free up a million. Then Mares to Son next week is yeah simple probably someone in the chat keeps saying who do i get in for barnes like it's been one game don't you don't don't do anything for barnes stick with barnes yeah he didn't look that bad i mean leicester only scored one goal but it it won't be every day they play against a team that looked okay defensively like they've got i don't think anything changed with him because we knew he'd play 60 70 minutes game week one and that's exactly what he did so I don't think anything's changed there. So First if you've gone through in game week one, stick with him, I yeah. reckon. I don't understand I mean, why... They play Norwich in game week three as well, didn't they? So you're, gonna want him, you're probably going to want him if you've got him. Like, yeah, 100%. It was fun having someone who's going to be playing next week for uh, against Norwich. I had two people playing, or three people playing against him this week. And then I'll have Barnes game week three. Like that's It was always a team that you wanted to target anyway. Um, although now it seems like Leeds is a... Is a you know, like a decent targetable fixture, if, if at least if you're Man United. Like, that was... Did we expect 5-1? I think a lack of Calvin Phillips yeah. exposes Leeds quite frequently. So whenever he's not playing... Um, and I think Lorente was missing as well. Um, so depending on when they come back. Um, but yeah, like, I don't think... I don't think anyone expected it to be that that heavy a, a I defeat. I think it's, yeah. Le- it's Leeds away as well, isn't it? And maybe... Maybe I feel like I overlooked that myself a little bit, a little bit too much that, you know, that they were playing away from home and maybe because I was quite scared not owning Greenwood, but only obviously once once the game started, he should have scored early on. Yeah, and actually, even yeah. talking about Pogba earlier, he should have scored as well. So, yeah, Mr. Well, Sitter. yeah, so there, there could have been more in it as well. I, I love that it's going to come back to this that we still need to because last season it didn't really matter if they're home or away but i'm so glad it's back because it adds a massive uh another element to the game i think eight out of ten home teams won in game week one and one of the away teams that won was liverpool against norwich that was always going to happen regardless so i think that's that's something that you definitely need to take into consideration now and if you only started playing last season <laughs> and this is your second season it's good it's a big big change um but it really is uh, it makes the game so much more interesting. Adds that yeah. extra layer. I think it's a nice change. It is a nice change. The football did just feel a bit more fun this weekend, even though I missed a lot of it because I was at a wedding. You know, it just felt normal. They were at normal <laughs> times. The crowd, like the crowd interaction was like, generally it's quite funny as well. Ah, there was some, some decent stuff. crowd stuff happening. I yeah, and it just it. sounds different. You get so used to the fake crowd noise and then it just, you know, sometimes there is a delay um, because you can't tell if the ball's going in the net. And I don't As know. a guy pressing a button, right? He's got to do it like, you know, yeah. people people just react and he's like, oh, <laughs> reacting. Oh, I forgot to press two. <laughs> so there we go. Um, 
We had a question from FPL Boat Anfield, um, who's asking our top three 6.0 million midfielders for the fifth midfield slot. All right. So should All we right. start with you, Rich, and then we go on to you, Dave? I mean, we do, you don't have to do three, but if there's any six millions that you particularly like. Um, so I think, yeah, Saar and Ben, ben Rama. Um, mm-hmm. I really liked Bergwijn yesterday against Man City, yeah. if, especially if Kane's off. Um, it looks like if Son then starts playing up front, um, and you can't get to Son, then if Bergwijn, if Bergwijn or however you pronounce his name, I'm butchering it, if he occupies that left flank, he looked pretty good yesterday. Um, I think Lucas Moore is 6.5, so I'd rule him out. But there's there's a lot of good options there. And Burmo again, but like you say, nobody's going to want to double up on the Brentford attack. So if you haven't got Tony, you can maybe move to Burmo. But Saar and Ben Rama are probably the clear ones for me. I have thought about the double up, like only very fleeting thoughts, because it is mm. Palace. Because I mean, separately as assets, you know, I kind of yeah. like what I saw. I like what I saw, but it's just doubling up on Brentford attack could feel. I don't know. You could look back and be like, why? The, why on earth did I do that? And yeah, I think because he's out of position as well. If he if he's going to keep playing up top, and he's more likely to play the furthest forward, yeah. then eventually he'll become massively owned. So it might, you know, if somebody's got a a transfer they need to make this week it might be nice to jump on early and see what happens yeah and what, what about yourself Dave you got any I, had ones? A... I mean Harrison's ones that's not been mentioned but yeah it's hard to mention someone who just lost 5-1 isn't it although I, I do understand the, the, the <laughs> Phillips thing like I'm not I'm not taking the the one game week seriously for Leeds we know they're going to be awesome yeah. I mean um, look at what we did against did for England in the, in the Euros yeah exactly um, it's hard to get Dave to agree with that <laughs> I'm undefeated in, in normal time or extra time. I heard, I heard. Um, I'm not going to get into that. There's so many people that are not Scottish in the chat. <laughs> um, who was the guy that played uh, midfield in Brentford who did really well? Is it Can- Kanos? Kanos? Sanos? Oh, Kanos. Okay. Yeah, Sorry, that was interesting. Kanos. He did pretty well as well. Um, not just for points, but he seemed to be everywhere where he should be. Like the Brentford's, Brentford's press is something else. Like I thought Leeds did well, but holy cow <laughs> yeah, well, it was um, interesting with canos though because do you remember the pod we pod we did with jamie where he said like Mbemo would be up front and canos might be a wing back or full yeah. back and then but they can switch so he was pretty spot on with that he was he did very well and and to be fair like even even though that was the case he was still getting in perfect positions he was running up from behind he knew where the spots were that he had to be at the right the right time and he got he got his goal and um yeah, he got all three bonus, I'm sure, as well. So that was, it was pretty good. Um, and he's only 5.5 too. Uh, so if you don't own Tony and you don't want to do a transfer up front and you're not too bothered and you need you know, to save funds, for example, like Gundo to Son or whatever, and you're downgrading someone else, then yeah, 5.5. You can't, you can't do worse than that. No, it's, it's a difficult one, this one. You and I'm sure we worse. get a bit bit more onto it later you know yeah. what, to do, what to do with something like Gundogan because I guess the alternative option and it might be an option I have is maybe I don't want to do it because of price drops and price rises but there is a chance of just playing um a, like a Brighton defender at home or even Eilings at home so bringing in your cheap cheap defenders I guess we need more news from Pep as well but it's, yeah. it's almost like the prices are sort of forcing me to do a move when I'm, I'm not sure about it but <laughs> we go on to our second headline which is much more exciting players that's our premium players and who do we want or need all right so rich what premium players are you eyeing up that you don't have well so what's interesting no, is you're that not I rich ask... hold on oh Sorry. not me <laughs> I, was, I, was I was thinking why you're asking me and not the guest i thought you were giving me a bit more intel um, I, I mean, I think Lukaku and Kane are the are the outstanding ones, um, just because we're kind of ex- well, we know Lukaku's going to be uh, playing for Chelsea in game week two. I think Tuchel's practically confirmed it. He's, he should be he should be out of quarantine and ready to go. Um, if Kane gets his move to City, I think he'll quickly become the most owned player in the game, and we'll see a lot of wild cards play just to get him in. Um, Son interests me as well now, just because of how he played against Man City. I mean, that's that's always going to be your trickiest games against Man City. And um, Nuno had them well drilled and they knew their roles well. So I think Son is probably a good shout. But yeah, I'm always attracted to sexy new strikers. And so somebody like Lukaku or Kane, the minute they're active in the game, I think everyone's going to try and get to them if... 
me, probably wait till I'll try and wait till game week seven or eight on a wild card with the international break. But I think, yeah, their, their ownership will rock it at the minute that Kane, especially, is classed as active, whichever team he plays. I, I, I totally, I absolutely agree with everything you said. And also want to add that when we discussed this pre season, um, either on the pod or in group chats or on Twitter or whatever, it was always the case of like Salah's untouchable. And Bruno could potentially be the pave the way for a cane or whatever, right? But after game week one, that has to have changed, right, Richard? Yeah, it's funny you ask me, isn't it? Because I've, <laughs> I've always, I've not been anti Bruno, but I've, I've never captained him, and I've always looked for ways to not have him. And you were on Manny for a little bit as well, weren't you? In some of our draft videos and stuff. Yeah, probably. If Robertson hadn't got injured, there was a chance I ended up with with Manny because that completely changed the whole structure of my team and made Bruno quite easily easy to get in. Yep. And it might have been a case for a lot of people, like his ownership may well have, um, Bruno's ownership may have increased because of that Robertson injury. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, after that performance at the weekend, it's hard for me to to argue you know, against it. Um, obviously, I asked both of you two, um, who, who would you captain over the, over the next six game weeks? I was meant to prepare a little graphic, but I've just realized I didn't. Um, <laughs> it's okay. We've got, the, we've got the fixtures <laughs> up in front of us, so we can yeah, go where we cool. look. I mean, basically, we didn't really need a graphic because you guys were saying you're going to captain Salah, Bruno, and there was like a Spurs one in there for, for game week three. That was basically the consensus. There was no, you know, captain in Lukaku in the first up till game week seven. So yeah. it, it does feel a little bit like people might just stick, which which is a, it's a bit of a shame, really. I mean, obviously, if, if the Kane deal had happened earlier, we might have seen a few more people putting in placeholders to get Kane. Like we were talking about getting Bardi in, weren't we? And obviously... He scored, but only got five points. Yeah. Um, but I didn't see many people going for that in the end. So it's a, such a boring answer, isn't it? To say it's like a, it's a, it's a, it's a wait and wait and see really. And cause I couldn't imagine now I was quite blase about, you know, having Bruno, I kept calling him a placeholder and I know Dave was getting offended. I mean, I'm calling him. <laughs> well, I, it wasn't defended. It was mostly just like, let's not forget he is actually amazing. And it was a reason why yeah. he was the best scoring player um, or midfielder. At least. Did Kane beat him in the end last season? I can't even mind. Um, but yeah, he was, he's, he's, he's been doing pretty good, man. Um, I didn't expect him to get a hat trick. Yeah. But... No, I've upgraded him from a placeholder to a, I don't know. Potential a, captain. A <laughs> stool, yeah, potential, potential captain <laughs> in my team. Do you know, one of the arguments I've always had against Bruno as well was I like to try and captain players who I think can get a hat trick. And I didn't think Bruno could do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's completely changed now. Whether it happens again or not, I don't know. It might be like Salah, where this is his highest game week score of the season. What did he say on Instagram? He was just waiting for people to fill the, fill the stadium before he got his hat trick. So there you go. He was just, he was I think so. <laughs> I mean, either of you going to go for Kane or Lukaku in the next couple of weeks? I mean, what if Lukaku comes out of the weekend now and scores scores a hat trick? You know, in, against Arsenal. No, but um, their fixtures are so rubbish. Sorry, Rich, you go. Yeah, that's no. I was just to say. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm primarily a fixtures guy. I know that um, a lot of people think form doesn't exist, but that's probably a different topic or a different time. Mm. Um, but I've looked at as part of uh, something that I wrote for fantasy football hub we've looked at drafts that you can fit uh, bruno salah um kane and trent into and they weren't too bad like they weren't they weren't too bad um one of them i had i think it was like kane and dcl up front for example yeah. um with some of the cheaper okay. midfielders um and then basically a stack of like 4.5 defenders next to trent or if you go without trent you're probably dropping down to somebody like a luke shaw um, so it, it's doable, and if you if you were to opt for Lukaku over Kane, then that's another one million towards the budget. So, I mean, we kind of a few of us put drafts together, and we felt like it could be done, but then some of the replies basically just said no, it can't be done. But I think people are going to have to start if they want all of them. They're going to have to start looking at drafts like that to get all of the players they want. I but think that's why yeah. with Gundogan, I might be a little bit more open. Instead of going for someone like Greenwood, you could start looking at those Abuembos or you know that yeah. kind that kind of price point, and then you're slowly taking the money out. Especially if Mares then comes down instead of up, but then Son's a problem because you know there's a lot of desirable stuff about him after this weekend. But yeah. if you go for someone like Son, then you're not going to be able to get Lukaku or you know if you have a Son Salah Bruno midfield with Trent and. Even if you filled it with a load of rubbish, apart from that, it's going to be very hard to fill it with then Lukaku and Kane. Hey, if Tottenham keep playing like yeah, that, then yeah. Son's going to outscore Lukaku and Kane if Kane moves. 
Like I know that City are awesome, right? But they share the goals, no question about it. Son is the obvious out outward, like the guy who's going to score all their goals. Um, so yeah, like and he's I think we'll learn a we'll yeah. learn a lot this weekend. I think that Wolves game about Spurs, and I think we'll get yeah. our answer if if we need to go for Son or not. And that's why I can understand why a lot of people are patiently waiting to you know to pounce with two transfers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's the perfect storm, right, for for Mares owners, um, because he's only a million off, and there's things we can do after game week two. Um, but I I wish I started with him, like just watching that game against City and them him having so many chances, and it was weird because if you watch the game, you'll know that he uh he kept like he'll get into the box and he would turn around and he wouldn't take that shot, and it was almost as if he was he was in two minds. He's playing a new position, etc. I know he's played there before, but he just seemed like he wasn't. He wasn't happy with where he was and he wanted to turn around and pass it and stuff. And that wasn't like the son that we knew, especially counterattacks on. But then when he did eventually like start taking shots, they obviously went in at halftime and, and he was told like, no, go and just start shooting, you idiot. Like, what, what are you doing? <laughs> and then he did and he was amazing. And he, the, yeah, amount yeah. Of, the amount of quality that he's got, there's no point that he shouldn't be shooting. He's difficult to mark because he can shoot with both his left and his right and all that good stuff that you learn off. Should be on pens as well. Yeah, and he, he should be definitely should be Six right. Set pieces. Yeah, there's a lot of desirable yeah. stuff with him there. We but... should consider him a premium. He's 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 ten million, so we could do you know double figures. Let's get to the point though. That and that's why I was you know messaging you guys to who who are you captain him basically because it does get to the point where you've got so many premiums. Some of these you're never never gonna captain, but yeah. so it's going to be interesting because I like the idea of what Rich was saying about you know that structure where you can squeeze all these players in, but Son's just making it you know even more difficult. Yeah, um, it was it was a good practice though, or, or sorry, a good exercise when you said we should write down who we're going to captain over the next six weeks. And I think we were yeah, talking I about. Got, I mean, it was the general. We did the eight and the say, general, didn't yeah. we? And he loves his. I think he calls it a captain matrix. Um, but he said that he only he spends two minutes on captains, if that. He goes, who's the who's the best fixture? Who's the best in form? Oh, it's probably. I right, we'll go Bruno this week, and that's it. That's all he does. It doesn't really go too much into it. But it was really good to write down the next six I think you're downplaying what he does there you're like yeah he just he closes his eyes and points well he's he's very good at this <laughs> yeah. okay hold on hold on he's very good at this game and he is able to do it in two minutes okay it wouldn't be two minutes for me or for for definitely not for richard but um <laughs> we'd be, it's it's the general okay but my point was is that he doesn't overthink his captaincy and when i was writing all of my captains down for the next six weeks i only wrote down Salah's name maybe once actually um, thinking about it now maybe twice whereas Bruno was in there three times and I think I put Lukaku for game week seven um, against Southampton oh you did have Lukaku and that's yeah. only because Liverpool and Man are playing Man City that week and I think Man United are playing yeah Everton or something like that so it's not it's not um, it wasn't a very good fixture for either of the people that I had but I think we need to start thinking about Spurs as a, a genuine contender for you know that we won't, we don't take hits unless it's for our captain. Like if Spurs are playing someone who has been rubbish and they look really good against Wolves, it's going to be very difficult for me not to move Maras on from. He's probably my highest target. Here's one for you both. Then would you, if you have Maras and you had the money available to move to Son this week, would you do it now or is it? It's, it's still a wait, isn't it? I'd wait. Oh, I might do it now. <laughs> just for, obviously, just Dave because, doesn't have the money, but yeah, I think. I don't know. I almost feel like the Wolves fixture might be easier for someone like Son than the Watford one, because Watford last year was defensively in the Championship were very good, although they did they haven't had a very good preseason. Whereas Wolves, the new manager likes to come out and attack, um, and that would give, I think that would give Son a bit more space, um, especially with Bergwijn and Mora behind him. But I, I'd still wait. Like I think there's so much information to be gained, you know, in these early weeks that. Yeah, it might pay off, but if it doesn't, or you get another injury and stuff, you're up the creek without a paddle. What kind of creek? Yeah. No, I'm joking. <laughs> it's a TV show. <laughs> what a show! I've got Spurs' fixtures on the screen just now: Wolves, then Watford, uh, Crystal Palace, and Chelsea. And you guys can't see it, but it's Arsenal and Aston Villa next. So very mixed. But as we've seen with City, like if they're if they're playing defensively, he's he's great on the counter. So and we've seen him do it against teams that aren't you know, very attacking, like Burnley, remember that famous goal that he scored. Um, so yeah, he can do it with any team. I, I'm not so concerned. The, the difference between him and Mara is simply he'll play every single game and it's hard to 
beat that, especially if he's on for, in, in form, right? Richard. Yeah, it's 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 quite um it's quite um boring saying to wait, but I, I do think it is the right decision, and that, that again defends my decision uh, that having Gundogan as a headline because I think he's the only issue people have got in their teams, unless they've gone like very you know off template and uh, you know different players to the ones that have been commonly recommended on Twitter and on podcasts, etc. Yeah, I I don't see any players that people have as part of a template that are like a big issue. Did anyone else get injured? I know there was no red cards, right? So no red cards. So no one's really got to do anything with that. Um, oh, no, I no. Everyone just was got, the only one that got injured. All the players that hold seem to be in the template, unless people want to start doing hits for like Casper Schmeichel or, you know, stuff like that. Woodman, for example. But Shout out to Planet. Yeah. I think um, Thingy went, James went for Pereira. Who was off template? Who hauled? Yeah, he had, no, he had no Bruno and outscored, outscored me and scored you, Dave. Me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, impressive. There you go. So it kind of does back up the Bruno um, theory. So well, no, we're not going back. If you, you, if you, if you do oh, things like per- Pereira, oh my goodness. Um. All right. So we are coming up to the piss break. So we want to just go for it now. Natural stop in the chat, and then we'll come back refreshed, renewed, and ready for headline three. 